So now we will go with the acid flow to see how the acid flow influences the initialization flow, leading to uninitialized data access, leading to acid data access. Here we go, we're gonna start with the count, which I said is sassy because it's based on the number of array elements that are sent between the processes. Again, this is code that's being run inside of CVM server. And so this just received some however, uh, XPC information of an array of however many elements were coming from the attacker. Now let's assume for our purposes for simplicity that the count is just set to two. Now this count influences the malloc. So here we go. This is going to be two times four times the size of a size T. And that will have descriptors, which is uninitialized. The gray is uninitialized. So we've got the malloc of eight things that are all uninitialized size of a size T. So we'll assume it's a 64-bit system and that those are 64-bit values. Next, we have the count being used to get addresses from this array. So zero time, uh, sorry, two times zero. So the address of this first thing is access begin pointer. So access begin pointer points at descriptors of zero. And then two times one is access data length, descriptors of two. 2 times 2 is 4 descriptors, mapped base address, and 2 times 3 mapped length points here. So these local variables are all pointers into this uninitialized descriptor array. Next, we're going to have count number of loops through this, and we've got 0. The clean initializing value is being set to map length of i, which is 0 here. So map length of 0, map base address of 0, access data length of 0, etc. And so zero is now written into all of these locations in the array. Okay, so that's good. Initialization is good. So let's go ahead and move around our picture and see what keeps going on here. Next, we have what we saw with the integer underflow vulnerability. The offset is acid, the size is acid, and the mapped size is acid. So what we know from that is the attacker can control this and they can decide whether it's going to break or not. So let's assume that the attacker does cause a break here. That's going to then get out of this for loop that it was in, fall down into the cleanup section, and now the cleanup is going to try to deal with any initialized data from within this descriptors array. So we've got count again, we're gonna assume is two. Let's go on mapped length of zero. If that is non-zero, then it'll do an N M unmap. So is map length of zero, zero? It is, and therefore this is not going to do this unmap. Then it's going to go through the loop again, and this time it does map length of one. Well, that is now uninitialized data access. So this could be, you know, completely uncontrolled, but we know that the attacker is ultimately going to control this into something that's going to be non-zero. And so consequently, what we have down here for mapped base address of one and mapped length of one is that those are both pointing at uninitialized data. And it is therefore going to call an M unmap on uninitialized data. But of course, we said the whole thing with OODA vulnerabilities is that this is not going to be uninitialized data. The attacker is going to play games to do heap feng shui or heap spraying to make sure that before the malloc was ever called, these values are going to hold something that was attacker controlled. So the whole game here is attacker makes these be acid values. And now when they eventually get here, these are going to be acid values. So all of a sudden we've got an attacker controlled M unmap, which is going to unmap some memory space and make it available for, you know, something else being put in there. So you can go see the original write up to see how they ultimately use that. They defeated address space layout randomization. They unmapped some chunk of memory that held some function pointers. And then subsequently they got their own attacker controlled function pointers in there and therefore they called attacker controlled locations. So what was the fix for this? Well, it's one of those simple fixes again, as with most OODA vulnerabilities, you just need to initialize immediately. So instead of malloc, calloc, the zeroing allocator. So now instead we have this all zeros descriptors. And so when it gets down to this code later on, mapped length of one is zero, and therefore it doesn't even call the M unmap, and it's done. It frees off this initialized memory, and it's all good.